Maintenance fluids are harming your critically ill patients, and today we're talking about why maintenance fluids should be held in your hemodynamically unstable patient. For me to create this argument, I have to go through a little bit of an example. When you give someone who is normal and healthy crystalloid fluids, say normal saline or LR, only 25% of that crystalloid stays in the intravascular space and everything leaks out into the interstitium. That means if you're giving them 100 cc's an hour, only 25 cc's are staying intravascular, 75 is going extravascular. Someone who is critically ill, someone with increased vascular permeability from septic, or inflammation, low oncotic pressure because their albumin is low, the number can be as low as 5% of that fluid that stays intravascularly. If you give someone 100 cc's an hour, it's only like 5 cc's that are intravascular and 95 cc's that go into the interstitial space. What's the big deal about the interstitial space? The more fluid that you give, the more edematous the kidneys get, the lungs get, the brain gets, and this leads to increased morbidity and mortality. When you have someone who is hemodynamically unstable and you believe needs volume, give that volume in the form of bolus. Or before you give that bolus, you should do some sort of testing to determine whether or not that person needs volume, whether that's using ultrasound, passive leg raise, or some sort of non-invasive or invasive monitor to tell you that a person is going to respond to volume. Whenever you give that volume, it should be a bolus and not be a slow trickle, only a negligible amount to seeing in the intravascular space. Whether or not you should be giving maintenance fluids at all for your patients is a topic for a different reel. But if you have a patient who's hemodynamically unstable, please give that volume in bolus form. I'm curious to hear what you have to say about maintenance fluids, but please remember that 